Okay, so today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, Simple Machines. Uh, you already watched a video on Simple Machines, the Bill Nye video, and then also talked uh, or you read an article about Simple Machines. So I'm not going to talk too much about the individual Simple Machines and examples of them. Uh, but today we're going to talk more about why they're useful and why, why we really learn about Simple Machines. Um, so there's six Simple Machines, lever, pulley, wheel and axle, incline plane, wedge and screw. Um, some of these are very similar to one another. For example, a wheel and axle is kind of like a lever that just keeps rotating and rotating and rotating. A wedge is sort of like two incline planes uh, squished together. A screw is like an incline plane with a wedge combination. It's like those two things and a wheel com combined. Um, a pulley a pulley is kind of a little bit like a, a, a lever. It's just that the the instead of the lever being solid and uh, one thing, it's it's a rope instead. So simple machines can be kind of very similar to one another, okay? And they all kind of um, rely on, on similar principles as well, okay? Um, now, the reason we learn about simple machines is because most simple machines can be combined or most large machines, so most compound machines, so when we think about really compound machines, are a combination of more than one simple machine. So if you can understand each one of these simple machines and how they work, then we can understand how more complex, uh, more complex machines work. Okay, so things like a uh, things like an axe, right? You have a wedge, you have a lever together. Uh, if you have shears, you have wedges and levers together. A wheelbarrow has levers and a wheel and axle. A uh, hand drill has a, a screw, uh, uh, gears, or gears are an example of a wheel with teeth. Um, so all sorts of like more compound machines can be broken down again into simpler machines. Uh, some are really simple with just two simple machines, like this uh, stone axe here, whereas something like a car or a lawnmower are, are many 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 simple machines put together so gears and axles and wheels and levers and pulleys there's pulleys in here there's levers there's axles all sort of there's even wedges in the in the blades so all sorts of simple machines within those compound machines right now why are simple machines useful so why do we use simple machines well uh, all simple machines can transfer force from one place to another so simple uh, if you have something like a lever, it transfers the force from where you're at to all the way down here. Same thing like a wedge from the top all the way down to the bottom here. Um, something like a clamp. So this would be like a clamp. Clamp changes the this motion into the, or the, the turning motion into a pushing motion. All right. Um, some machines also can increase the amount of force that we can lift in a heavier object or exert greater force with a machine than we could without it. So a wedge. Uh, a wedge, you, it actually changes the direction of the force too. Um, so the force is down, and the amount of force you put down, it's going to actually increase the amount of force pushing out sideways. Okay, this, uh, the clamp here, it takes a lot less force to push things together if you just screw them. If you screw them together, if you're turning it and screwing it, uh, it doesn't take as much force. And and this is actually, you can actually include this thing as a lever as well. This this is a lever actually. I always think that's a the, the the handle is actually kind of like a lever, right? Um, this lever here it increases the amount of force that you can put onto the object or, or the load here as well. Okay. Um, another thing is they can change the direction of force. So uh, pulleys do that very well. Levers do it very well, and gears do it very well. A gear turns one way, the other gear turns the other way. Okay, so you can get gears turning things opposite directions. Uh, you pull down on a pulley, but an object goes up. Same thing, you push down with a lever, but the object moves up. Okay, same thing with a, a catapult. A catapult is an example of a lever. Okay, um, some machines can also increase the distance and speed of force that we can move things. A really good example of this are gears. Gears in your car can take your engine, which is moving very, very fast, and then it can actually move the wheels a little bit slower, but with more power, okay? So we may be decreasing the distance we're traveling. Same thing with this lever here. The 
this part of the lever goes down a whole bunch, but this only goes up a little bit. Okay, now because we're changing the distance, it's moving more distance here, but less distance here, we can increase the force so we don't have to apply as much force to lift this object. Okay, so the amount of force we need to lift the object becomes less. Okay, now the distance we move it becomes more, but we, we increase our force. So um, we can, uh, again, it says increase the distance and speed of a force. So it's usually now... It's usually one thing or the other. We can increase the distance that we move it or the speed that we move it. Um, a catapult, for example, we if we have a counterweight here, the catapult arm is really long. We move it very short distance here, but this actually increases the distance that's moved and it increases the speed that it's moved at. Okay, so we're increasing the distance and the speed. So the distance it travels and the speed it travels. Okay, we can do the opposite too: lessen the distance, increase the force. All right. Um, if you have a gear like this, this for every time this gear turns, this one may turn like two or three times. Okay, so we're increasing the speed at which this turns because we're increasing decreasing the distance. Okay. Um, so continuing on, why they're useful. And now, no machine can really increase both force output and distance. It's either one or the other. So one or the other. So here. The force output of this, as you push down, there's more force put, but there's less distance taken okay, of this lever here. Same thing with a screw. You're going to turn this a whole lot of times, but the, the force needed to push it down into the object is less, right? You just, you're just turning it, all right? So there's a gain in force if smaller object is needed to lift to move an object. But well, this heavy object will move or be lifted through a shorter distance. So here, that's what this is talking about here. So even if there's a gain in force, there's a loss in distance move. That's basically what this is talking about here. Okay. Um, same thing with a pulley. A pulley, if you add more and more pulleys, the distance, as you pull this down, the distance which the pulley moves up becomes less and less. But the force needed to pull it down becomes less and less. All right. It also works the opposite way. If you want to, uh, or actually, I guess it's the same way here. Uh, we can move the force over a lot or the work over a longer period of time with an inclined plane. Okay, so we can do, we can, it takes a little bit less force, a little bit less effort to move the load, but it's going to take a little bit longer to do so. Okay, it's going to take a longer distance. Okay, now uh, machines make the work easier but they don't save work, okay? Machine, this, the, this amount of work here is the same amount of work as if you lifted it up that same amount of distance. If you just lifted it right up off the ground, the amount of work you did would be the same, okay? Same thing with if you take this person, you lift them one meter up, it would be the same amount of work if you pushed them up the, the, um, the incline. You're just spreading the work out over a longer distance. So this is the work is spread out over this entire distance, pushing down this lever, okay? Here, the work is spread out over this longer distance of the inclined plane. Okay, so less work, sorry, the same amount of work, but less effort, less effort, less force. Okay, the distance, remember like for, force times distance equals work. So if you decrease the amount of force, you have to increase the distance that you, that you do the work, or do you do the, use the force. Okay. Okay, so we can go deeper into understanding each one of these simple machines. Each one of these simple machines, there's all different types of gears, there's all different types of pulleys and levers and, um, you know, wheels and axles and there's wedges, all different types, okay, all different types. I just want to show you what I mean, and this is, there's three different actually types of levers, okay, there's three classes of levers, okay, first class, second class, third class. And the difference between each one of these depend it depends on where the force is and where the fulcrum is. So where is the force, fulcrum, and load? Okay, force, fulcrum, and load. Where are those three things? Okay, in a class one lever, the fulcrum is in the middle. Okay, and the effort and the load are opposite ends of the fulcrum. So the fulcrum separates the effort and the load, or the force and the load fulcrum is in the middle okay a class two lever is where the load is in the middle 
and the fulcrum is at the end. So like a wheelbarrow. Okay, fulcrum at the end, load in the middle, the force or the um, the force or the effort is at the other end. Okay, so you pull up here, the fulcrum helps you lift the load. Okay, the third class lever is where the effort is actually in the middle between the fulcrum and the load. Okay, so if you think about it, when you lift, when you dig up, dig using a sho shovel, uh, this, your backhand usually stays where it is and pushes down as your effort lifts up. Okay, as your effort lifts up. So the fulcrum, it kind of moves here and the load is at the other end. Okay, so it's, it's kind of hard to figure these things out sometimes with depending on the example that's given but these are the three classes of levers and i'm just using this as an example of how we can break down simple machines and really talk about them more in depth here okay now uh simple machines help us to gain a mechanical advantage a mechanical advantage is basically the ratio of force produced by a machine to the force applied to it Okay, it's used in assessing the performance of the machine. The, the greater the mechanical advantage you have, the less force you need, the less input force you need to have a greater output. Okay, now it's not, a simple machine isn't always about amplifying, amplifying the force. Sometimes it's about just changing the direction of the force, right? Sometimes it's just about changing the direction of a force, like in a lever or a pulley. So sometimes the mechanical advantage might be one, okay? Um, but it's good to know the mechanical advantage to see if we are um, able to lift greater masses given the same amount of force. So we can do an example here. So a hammer is used as a lever to pull a nail out of the wood out of a piece of wood. So if the user user inputs three newtons of force. So if you're just pulling up with three newtons of force, you might not be able to pull that nail out, right? But if you use it as a lever, so instead of using it use it as a lever and now the hammer has an output force of 45 newtons what is the mechanical advantage of the hammer so mechanical advantage is output over input so the output was 45 the input was three so we have a mechanical advantage of 15. the higher the mechanical advantage the more the machine amplifies the force so now you can more easily get that nail out of the piece of wood Okay, if that nail wasn't coming out with three newtons, but it, you know, you increase the, you use it as a lever now, you can increase the output force to 45 newtons, almost 15 times, it's 15 times bigger than the original. Okay, so that's it, that's it, that's all we're going to talk about today. There's some work for you to do and some practice on this, so uh, get going on that, and I'll see you guys later.